oh my god i'm never going to pay eight percent we bought a house in eight, 17 months ago and it was at a six percent interest rate the equity that we grew between 17 months ago and last month when i sold it was like seventy thousand dollars mm. So I don't care what the interest rate is mm -hmm. because the equity appreciation, growth, right. the yes, appreciation that. that you're making on your properties in this area is going to well exceed that. Have you thought about buying a property in Panama City Beach? Well, today is the day we're going to share with you just how to do that. I've got some great guests today, Scott and Jennifer Bowman, who have been realtors in the area at a boutique real estate group called Beachy Beach Real Estate. And we are going to be talking to them today about how to succeed in this market. Guys, Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Thank you. Hey, Jennifer. Good to see you. So talk to us about what's going on, what you're seeing right now. It's been a kind of a, a wild year. Uh, rates have nearly tripled, but you're still closing business. And tell us about how are people winning right now? Um, we are still winning. We are still getting stuff under contract. Um, we're seeing a lot of uh, buy downs. Um, instead of asking for closing costs, they're asking for money to buy down the rate. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jennifer does primarily new construction, and there's just a, a, a still a, uh, a need for housing in, the, uh, in that side of the, the market where her builder is currently most active, and it's east side of town, uh, college station development. Right. So we're still fast as we can build them, basically. So you're seeing builders still come in, help or sellers come in, buy the rate down, which, guys, of course, you know what that means, buying the interest rate down. You're talking about getting a lower interest rate either temporarily or permanently. Are you seeing something more than one of the other ver temporary versus a permanent buy down um i haven't really um no i haven't really it's it's six and one half a dozen of the yeah. other it just depends on what they're able to do how much money they have coming in she's more of a listing agent she doesn't often see the loan terms as they come you know uh on the buy side what are these sellers usually um agreeing to pay one percent, two percent of the purchase price or the loan amount. What are you seeing? Um, or is it more I've of a seen, flat fee? It's more of a flat fee for my builder, um, and it's not a whole lot. But you know, he'll do five thousand dollars on a buy down, or he will. Um, but I have seen it a little bit higher than that. I've seen um, regular sellers that are selling not new construction that have gone, you know, one percent. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, instead of uh helping with closing costs and stuff like that the, it's going toward buy downs and five thousand can still make an impact for a oh, buyer yeah. right yeah I and mean, you're talking about maybe getting their payment down two or three hundred dollars yep. uh maybe three or four hundred dollars depends on the situation but that could be the difference between making a decision to move forward or not right oh yeah and so talk about the market what you're seeing right now how is it softening some more it has softened um this year it started out really strong um it has slowed down considerably but we're still seeing um contracts coming through um a lot more listings right now so you know it's some people are thinking that okay maybe they lost they missed the boat and so now they're starting to list their properties um not a whole lot of price reductions. I don't have, I've, I have a couple that I've, I'm trying to encourage, you know, get them moving a little bit faster. Not interested in, in reductions. So. What about days on the market? It's not. Definitely really, longer. Okay. Yeah, definitely longer. What are you seeing on, on average right now? Um, I think we're about 60. 65. We're 65. about, <laughs> we're about twice as much as it was about a year ago. Yeah. But still 65 days. I know uh, on 30A, it's more like 150 days, which is. Well, Jesus. I guess that, that depends on the price point. Yeah. Uh, I think 30 is a little bit a uh, uh, steeper price point. Um, so I, I think in the price point that we're most uh, active, um, the days on market. I mean, overall, the entire MLS is 64, but there's a lot. Um, a lot that goes into that. Yeah. And when you, when, you, when you parcel it down to the individual price point location and stuff, they, it does vary quite a I bit. I have had um, my, first, <clears throat> ooh, my first renewal in a long time. So I had to renew the listing and okay. uh, it's been a long time since I've done that. Right, so, right. <laughs> you know, exactly you forget that conversation. Not exactly a proud moment. Yeah, that's yeah a... so, um, but it's higher and it's, it's a $1.2 million and it's, it's been six months on the market. So. so for listeners considering, you know, an investment property or a second home, what are some insider tips that you would, would recommend to them as they consider that? Actual rental income. Uh, you know, projections, projections are one thing, but 
actuals or projections are one thing, but actuals different. Oh my gosh! Uh, okay. uh, I would Talk just. About that. I would well. Um, you can project. Uh, all day long. Yeah, yeah, a year ago, you know, projections were coming in pretty strong. This was one of the strongest rental markets in the country, and, and those uh, optimistic property managers and um, marketers for short-term rental companies were given projections that. Uh, I don't think they took into consideration, um, you know, the inflationary market we're in, you know, outside of vacations and stuff. So I think the, those some of those projections were very optimistic and got a few people pinched, uh, pinched, yeah. overextended, possibly. Yeah, so. we I actually see it because we have some vacation rentals and the year after COVID was fantastic. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was booked solid. People we're living. Um, but the next year start slowing down this year slow down some more so you know there's a season for everything and um yeah last year the projections generated a lot of you know cash flow you know centered thought of of the um of the loan <laughs> and there was even some prop some loans out there that was you know debt service coverage ratio stuff and i think you know some of the some of those types of people that took those higher risk loans are in you know they're gonna have to uh, adjust and accommodate Right, right. So right now, um, I mean, <clears throat> it seems like that there's buyers are getting a little bit more opportunities to to negotiate. It seems oh, like, yeah. right? Oh yeah. So whereas even a year ago it was tough for that, was it not? Oh yeah, yeah. A year ago, um, even with my builder, um, if somebody came in even asking for a dime, they were like, no go. move on. I'll move sell it to somebody else. Um, Appraisals. These days are not. Yeah, it's not like that now. Appraisal yeah. would come in before. It's like, you want it or not? Yeah. I mean, it didn't matter. If the appraisal came in low. You had to pay more. Yeah. You had to pay over the appraisal. Right. That's just how it was. It was no negotiation. Now, this will, you know, well, how much low? <laughs> There's a little different flavor in terms of, you know, you, uh, any seller should be afraid of extended time on the market because that obviously is still a, a red flag for a lot of buyers. Yeah. I mean, you guys, 20 years, you've been doing business. So you you went, you lived through 08. What, Not sure how. Oh, man. <laughs> but talk about how now, for those of you, for the viewers out there that are thinking, man, I don't know if, you know, if we're ever going to buy with the rates where they are. But talk about kind of what you've seen, you know, as you've gone through different cycles and how this is maybe different. We didn't just survive 08. We bought two properties in 07. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we were we all in. It. Yeah, we were, we were all, all in. Um, so we bought the properties in in '07, like January. At the peak, and then, man. I mean, you could see it. You can feel it if you're in this business long enough. You feel the market, and we're about right here now. Yeah, so then we bought the houses here, yeah. and then you know, six free months fall. later, we were in the toilet. It was free fall, and for years, oh, I mean, yeah. it took years to recover from that. But it was, you know, we it worked. It, it yeah. worked out. We and, did it. And you know, we're stronger because of it. Um, but, but, but I would, now, I would what, caution people to, Yeah, you know, what look. I'm seeing now and what I try to train people and, and explain people, they're like, oh, my God, I'm never going to pay 8%. Okay, so <laughs> just a quick story if we have a second. Yeah. We bought a house in eight, 17 months ago, um, and it was at a 6% interest rate. And the equity that we grew between 17 months ago and last month when I sold it, it was like seventy thousand mm. dollars, and we just rolled it into another house that now we're paying eight percent interest. So <laughs> I don't care what the interest rate is mm. because the equity growth, right. the yes, appreciation that. that you're making on your properties in this area, is going to well exceed that yeah. in a short amount of time. Rent is one hundred percent interest. Yeah, so. I've noticed you guys are really good at being able to show the clients that you work with, all of the factors involved with the numbers. It's not just your payment, your rate. It's about what the cash flow. You talked about that, like real projected numbers, but then also the appreciation. You have to take in consideration appreciation. I mean, you know, we've got guys that dial down into the two bedroom go front condo market to the, you know, this is how many months on the market. This is how much inventory sold over the last the, this many years. This is the appreciation. I mean, we've got some <laughs> almost a now, uh, statisticians almost that you know are uh, in some of our because uh, they just love the numbers and they can just see it you know and it just helps their customer base too yeah. so I just you know I love that people jump into the numbers but it's always my 
not everybody can do that. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you try and teach and show people that and they don't understand what you're talking about. And sometimes you got to get that. You got to have a lender that can speak it too. So yeah. that's, that's important. So, yeah, it takes a team effort, I think. I mean, mm -hmm. you Absolutely. really got to pull out all stops right now in this market. But I do like the fact that it's softening some, uh, that you've got, you know, buyers not feel like they're just backs up against the wall and don't really have a lot of choices. So I think the rates going up, there's actually a, a positive side and upside for that because, you know, you get more homes on the market typically. Uh, and we are seeing that slow as it may be. A little more is, to choose from. Yeah. Well, yeah. And like you said, buyers don't have to settle. Uh, you know, you know, when you have choices, I mean, it, it's, it's just a better overall experience. You know, you can talk to them about their choices. Uh, you know, in this market, you need to decide somewhere that has convenient beach access. Whereas our market, that's not a, nearly a concern. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. making sure you know the local aspects of things, whether it be, you know, access to the beach or uh, rental rates, <laughs> you know, and um, and that kind of thing. I think that's vital, having a smart yeah. person on your team. What are some good areas, some developments right now that you guys are are, are positive on, that you're hot on, that you really like for, for, for investors? Margaritaville Beach Cottages. Okay, are. talk about those. Oh, there's a. They're about to release a um, the third phase in that. They had the Gulf Front, and they have some uh, across the street. They have a beautiful amenity they just rolled out. It's Lazy it's River. Property. It's absolutely beautiful. And the, right now, the last uh, element uh, that they're selling is what's called beach bungalows. They're effectively like small. Uh, tiny homes basically okay. with a loft sleeping space and everything else. Oh, the loft sleeping space has a, a bathroom in it so it's like two bedroom two bath uh, but they're it's a loft kind of figure and they're but small the whole property is just and it's in a resort type stunning. of thing so you can kick it back into the resort for the rental aspect of it it's got like food trailer food a bar right there at the pool it's all on site um, it's very very neat and it's um, it's probably the more modern um, uh, development on the beach. And <clears throat> our company um, and one of the companies here in the uh, Walton County market uh, have exclusive um, access to the to that third phase right now. Everything yeah. in there currently built is sold um, and the third phase is coming. What are the price points going to be in the third phase? Um, we're expecting 400, mid 400s, okay. but I haven't seen the, 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 seen the collateral comes out yet, like but... this week, I think. So. Well, and that really catches a lot of people that maybe thought they couldn't buy in Panama yeah. City Beach. I mean, and all of a sudden now, Because it literally is a walk to the beach. Yeah, it's, it's across the street. Yeah. But it has world class amenities like right there, you know. Um, on site. Well, on site walking distance from your bungalow. So. And so how do people get in touch with you? Like, what is the best way? How, talk about your marketing a little bit. And how, how do people you guys connect with and you prefer to connect with? The email? Um, I'd say email, uh, pa Jennifer at PanamaCityHomesales.com. Our website is PanamaCityHomesales.com. Call me, text me, carry your pigeon. I'll take it all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, Facebook, uh, Facebook PanamaCityHomesales.com is their Facebook business page or, you know, Jennifer at um, – Jennifer Bowman on, on, on Facebook. Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah. Yeah, business page and a friend page, but you know, we always they end up making friends. Together. We just kind of blend, you know. Yeah. yeah. If you do a deal, we end up being a friend. That's how it works. So a lot of agents, even lenders, getting out of the business, people stressed, speak people are uh it's dealing with high anxiety. Um, what are you guys seeing out there? How are you handling it? And what are you guys doing to to stay on top of your mental health game? Um I'm going to get a massage. <laughs> um, it's That's a really tough one because it is. It's very stressful. Um, we try to train our agents that if you have your sphere of influence and you're working your database on a daily basis and you are communicating and you are making and building those relationships, you're going to continue to have business. You can listen to conversations you have and hear the high points and low points in their life and know whether or not they are maybe going to need to sell. They may not even know they need to sell yet, but you're going to hear that in that conversation that they're going to need to sell or not. Um, you just listen for changes when you're having conversations with people. Talk about that with your database. Uh, you're having conversations with people. 
what are you doing? You're dialing out, you're calling, talking to well, your people calling, in your sphere. Well, um, calling, it could be a number of different things. Um, it could be sending them a card. Um, it could be picking up the phone, talking to them, just sending them a, a quick snapshot. Hey, this is where the market's at right now. This is where your house is at right now. Um, just so they know, hey, you know, some of them don't even know how much equity they have in their right. house. They haven't even thought about it. And you just reach back out to those customers and say, you know, did you know you have this much equity in your house? So one of the ways, I mean, you know, I teach people, I'm a trainer. And one of the ways I teach my agents to, to, you know, generate a call list, so to speak, is to scroll through social media. And, you know, they, people oftentimes will post something of, uh, about change. And if it's positive or negative, it's upsizing or downsizing or empty nesting or whatever the re- is, you know, sure they can like comment and all that kind of stuff, but to pick up the phone and just kind of congratulate somebody on a graduation or to pick up the phone. Yeah. So to Baby. use, to use the fact that someone openly shared a, um, milestone in their life, but good or bad, you know, death or birth or graduation or divorce, whatever the, to pick up the phone and just to, to, to bridge that digital divide, yeah. so to speak. I, I think that that's kind of the, that's they, what I try to teach people. That. And, and here's the thing is in, in the world of digital, that stands out. So I think that's probably your, um, it shows you care. Yeah. Well, I mean, you pick up the phone and, and it, it doesn't even have, it doesn't have to be about real estate. It's just, you're about the, 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 the item they posted mm-hmm. about the, Hey, uh, uh, congratulations! Your son just graduated boot camp. Everybody's going to be doing that for her one day. So, and it's very rare yeah. that I call them up and yeah. say anything about real estate. I'll just call yeah. them up and say, "Congratulations on the baby," or "Congratulations on this." I'm sorry, your somebody died. You know, whatever the case is, um, I never bring up real estate. They just know that I, that's that's what, what I you do. do. We and also so they'll. They remember that next time. We have a new program that our company's enrolled in recently, and it's called it's a local gifting program. And so what it does is we I sign people up, I put their email or phone number for text or whatever, and it sends them a gift on my behalf once a month to a local place, not a franchise, not like TGF Riders or not like that. I have to add him to my Lolo list. That's Perfect. Right. Lolo list. <laughs> yeah, it's called Lolo, but it's local gifting and it empower and what happens is the local vendor gets paid full price for the gift, but it only costs me, you know, a, a minuscule amount per person because and you know, they bank on the fact that not everybody's gonna redeem the gift, but it's high quality, uh, local crafted all local. supporting all small local. businesses yeah it's yeah. super cool it's called lolo and i i've di- I, i've just i think that's the best thing that I've, we've seen lately and so yeah in this, this situation that's perfect uh is when you know you meet and talk to somebody then they have different gifting areas like the 30a pensacola destin and panama city so yeah, yeah. For, well i'm sure they have it all over the country but i mean over here it's only four so moving into winter uh what do you see it's kind of kind of the market going to do what's your thoughts on as we move through winter into the new year well typically this time of year can go either way um you know i've had years where everybody wants to buy a house right now because they want to be in it before the holidays um i've also seen it where they're going to wait until after the holidays so it's kind of you know an iffy situation um and like i said it's gone both ways for me um but i'm just staying consistent i always suggest when people um take a listing during the holidays that they discuss openly discuss showings during the holidays and decorations you know because some people really like that but if it's (laughs) some is over the top so you know so i think the idea is that you do it in a um you know your way you make your home look as beautiful as you want but you know it'd be way stressful for me yeah (laughs) She, I just she's, feel like it would be a lot. Well, not everybody's. I know a lot of people who would love it. Right. I, I just think that sometimes that's the, the, the time people are often most proud of their home is when it yeah. looks decorated. In, for the you know, whether it's yeah. fall or, you know, Christmas, the holidays, Hanukkah, whatever. So it's, but I, you know, a lot of people put extra effort because yeah. people come to visit and things of that nature. You want to talk about your builder that you rep and kind of what you have sure. available for it's, people out there? Uh, Cam Ben Holmes is our builder, uh, Ben Wartman, and he is uh, five generations Bay County. Wow. So he's he's been around for a minute. We've built all kind of stuff. I've represented him for about probably a little bit over 15 years. Oh, wow. 
Um, we're in a development right now called College Station. Uh, we have about 14 homes left, nine floor plans. Uh, I think actually we only have like six of those floor plans left. I think three of them have knocked out. Um, price range is anywhere from 370 up to 445. And uh, it's on the kind of northeast side of, of uh, Panama City. So, but we build a lot. We've built out here, uh, not out here, I guess, but west end of the beach. Yeah. Um, all over Bay County. We have some stuff going up in uh, Gulf County. And Unique about that builder is that each home is different. The tile choices, the ca cabinet choices, colors, flooring. Um, it's, we, we used to call them. Lighting pictures. Semi custom because um, everything is everything that's in it. His wife's an interior designer. She picks all the colors and stuff. So it's super modern mm -hmm. stuff that, you know, uh, very nice, elegant. Um, but no one house is the same. It yeah. may have the same floor plan, but they're not going to put. They're not going to have two identical houses right. anywhere. So. Mindset wise, you guys, I mean, you have to have the right mindset right now. I mean, oh, people yeah. are stressed, like we talked about. It is anxiety depression you know my big goal is to help people i'm a top one percent mortgage broker but i'm on a mission to help people overcome anxiety depression things like that what are you guys seeing i guess uh as in your life that you do on a daily basis to make sure you mentioned massage but mindset wise it's important for agents i mean you're self-employed yeah. you know you're running a business within a business so um you really have to have a positive mindset the minute you start going negative, everything gets negative. And what do you do to maintain um, a positive mindset? What do you do? Live with him. <laughs> <laughs> you he's are a, very positive. He's I, a, uh, yeah, I, I live with my coach 24-7. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's got 24-7 unavoidable coaching is what yeah. we call it. So, no, I, um, I just love my life. I love where I live. I love the job I get to do. I, I love the car I get to drive. I get the house I get to live in. I mean, I just, my... I just is I just love it. There's I mean I've had trials in my life, but it is that's more just a, for me. a slice in time. I I know everything is in my life has gone positive and it will continue. And I mean I, I've had you know a bump in the road, but and oh my the gosh. days that I have real bad days, I'll just go to him and be like, man, I really need I can something. I, and he's like, okay, what about this? And he spin he knows how to spin it around. I don't spin nothing. Uh, I just can see it. I can yeah. see it crystal clear. And you, she's a, I, I always tell her that worry is a negative use of your imagination. And but I do a lot. She does. And she's worried right now about my son at boot camp. And I'm like, I can't wait for him to get out. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, our philosophies are so much different. And she was talking about how stressful it is. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's wonderful. It's the best thing ever. I mean, I, I'm having to deal with her, but at the same time, I'm happy for him. And she's just worried. And I'm like, it's going to be great. You just, you don't see it. So I don't, I don't know. We just, it's, you know, opposites attract. I, definitely I don't know. definitely have to lean on him a lot. Oh man. Well, I think that's the way, I mean, for my wife and I, I mean, I struggle with worry. So yeah. I'm like you, I struggle with worrying and it's always been there. And so it's, it's a battle. It's, I mean, it's a, con it's a thing Constant. to where I have to go on the offensive like you to, if it doesn't come natural or, you know, you have to really listen in and lean into and listen to your spouse, what they're saying, listen to your coaches, yep. your mentors. I mean, it's that whole thing of what goes in comes out. So you've got to be careful and mindful. I think of what you've got going into your mind, you know, whether you're listening to the wrong stuff uh, or the right stuff. And I think that's just so key. And, you know, you guys have a, pot, a broker who's one of the most positive people I've ever met. And so that's always a huge thing. And so, yeah. And I'm a beekeeper. That's relaxing to me. Oh, man. See, I don't do that. I'm not going out there. I'm not. That's great. So you got a hobby that keeps you busy. I have a hobby yeah. that keeps me busy. Yep. Yeah. Mike Tyson had his pigeons. You have, have you bees. have your bees. Yeah. yeah no. So. I'm not doing the bees. I'll eat the honey. That's okay. Well, guys, Scott, Jennifer Bowman, are, they are amazing people, as you can see, amazing agents. And I'm so excited to have them on the Martin Ely Show. And if you guys need to buy a home in the Panama City or Panama City Beach area, tell us again how to reach you. 850-258-1509 or Jennifer at PanamaCityHomesales.com. All right, guys, till next time, we'll see you. Thank you.